Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at producing routes, isochrones and travel time matrices using the OSM Tools plugin in QGIS. Um, so OSM Tools is a plugin based on the Open Route service, um, which is basically a routing data set based on OpenStreetMap. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install the plugin, and we do that by going to our plugins manager, type in OSM, and we can find the OSM Tools plugin just here. And then click Install Plugin. Should just take a couple of seconds. So because we're using the Open Root service, um, we do need to get a hold of an API key um, to enable us to carry out the calculations. So essentially, we're going to be using their web-based service to carry out our travel time calculations and then automatically download the data back into QGIS. So we'll find the OSM Tools plugin under Plugins, OSM Tools. And the first thing you'll need to do if you haven't done that this previously is to order an API key. So click on Order Key here. And you can either put in your details or sign up with GitHub if you already have a GitHub account. Um, so I've already gone through this process. Once you've signed up, you'll reach this screen here. So to create a new API key, you just need to select free token type, type in a token name, and click create token. Now I've already got one created, so it won't let me um, create a new one. Once you've done that, your key will appear at the top here. You can click to copy it, and we can go back to QJS, and paste the key into the API key field at the top here. And we're now ready to start carrying out calculations with OSM tools. Now, just a couple of quick notes before we do this. So I've created several points to base the route calculations on. Um, mine are around Manchester in the UK. So OSM tools needs a point layer as the basis for its calculations. So if you're calculating travel times between, say, areas like parks, for example, what you need to do is put the points at the access points um, to those particular locations. So it may be that you have two or three access points to your park and you could put a point at each of them um, in order to, to carry out your travel time calculations. The second important thing to note is that your point layer needs to be in WGS84 coordinate system to work properly with OSM tools. So if your other layers are in some kind of local projected coordinate system, make sure that your point layer is in WGS84. Otherwise, when you try to send it off to the API um, to calculate your routes or isochrones, you'll get an error message back at the top. Um, and in that case, the chances are that it's the coordinate system that's causing the problem. So I've just got three points created in WGS84, um, and I can use these to carry out my route and isochrone um, calculations. So I'm gonna go back to the OSM Tools plugin. And first of all, I'm going to create some routes. So you can pick points on the map if you just want to click to pick two points. Click map coordinates here, and it will then allow you to go and click a start point for your route. And for some reason, it comes back very big afterwards. You can then do the same for your end point. And OK. Them in black so we can't see them very well. It will produce a route between the, the two points that we've just clicked. Um, but if we want to use our points layer instead, we simply choose from layer here. If your layer doesn't appear, you might need to click refresh list first. Um, and I've just got an ID field called ID and then destinations. So I'm using the same layer for both the start and endpoints of my routes. Um, so this means I need to do all rows by all rows, otherwise it won't produce any, any routes. If you had one layer for your start points, one layer for your endpoints, um, you'd want to select row by row calculation. Now we can see here that we actually have quite a few options we can choose from. Um, firstly, we can choose the travel type. Um, so we've got driving, car, HGV, various types of cycling, walking and um, wheelchair if we want to find accessible routes. And we can also say whether we want the fastest or the shortest route. So I'm just gonna stick with um, driving car and go with 
fastest route. We can also choose to avoid features. So we're using the OpenStreetMap data, so I can't promise that it will be perfect, but OpenStreetMap is pretty comprehensive in most parts of the world now. Um, so if we want to avoid highways, tunnels, all these kinds of things, um, we can select those options here. So I'm going to leave that alone for now and just click OK. And we can see it processes at the top there. And I'm going to put these up as blue lines. And there we go. We can see it's now produced routes um, between all of my three start and endpoints. And if we quickly go into the attributes table, we can see that it's also telling me the distance, um, which I think is in kilometers, and the travel time in hours between each of these. And it's got the, the idea of our start and end points here. So it has produced a kind of limited travel time matrix um, at the same time. So that's producing routes, uh, which is useful, although it doesn't give us kind of turn by turn directions. So maybe not as useful as something like Google Maps um, or going to the, the Open Route Service website, which will also give you um, travel directions. However, there's other things that we can do with the OSM Tools plugin. So let's go back again and this time go to the isochrones option. So isochrones literally mean equal time. So essentially what this does is it starts at each of our start points and we can look at multiple points at once and calculates where we could get to within a certain time or a certain travel distance. So for this one, I'm going to change my travel mode to cycling just to stop the areas from getting too big. And I'm going to produce isochrones by time. And we can actually put multiple isochrones separated with a comma. So I'm going to produce isochrones at 5, 10, and 15 minutes from each of my locations. And again, we can either choose our location from the map or we can select to use a layer. So once again, I'm going to use my depots layer. So we're actually going to have three sets of isochrones um, around each of our each of our points. Okay, so we can then click OK, and it takes again just a few seconds, and we now have isochrones around each of our points for where we could cycle to within five, ten, and fifteen minutes. So isochrones are really useful. Um, they're often also called service areas. So if we want to calculate whether people have access to particular services, for example, which which houses are within a five minute cycle ride of a hospital or a green space or a school, um, then this is the kind of calculation that you want to be able to do. And setting up your own um, network data set is a pretty time consuming task. We need a lot of information, um, whereas the open route service already gives us quite a comprehensive data set to work with in most locations. And again, we can choose different types of travel times. So we've got cycling, we could do walking, um, so if I go back again, I can change to walking on foot, and the same calculation, we can see we now get much smaller isochrones if we're traveling on foot. Um, and then the last thing that the OSM Tools plugin allows us to do is to produce a travel time matrix. So this basically allows us to have multiple start and end points and work out the travel times um, between each of those. So I'm going to go with cycling again um, for this one because our points aren't that far apart. Again, I'm using the same layer for start and end locations, but we could use two different layers. Click OK. And this time it doesn't produce any visible layers on the map. Um, this simply gives us an attribute table. So we could export this to Excel or anything else um, and we can see where we're going from to. Okay. So if I click there we can see we're going from point one to point three, travel time 0.45 hours, just under eight kilometers, and so on and so forth. And all of the outputs that we get here are now fully editable. If we wanted to we can go into the attributes, we can add things to these, we can change the styles, um, make them look how we want for displaying. Uh, we could just select one set of isochrones, for example, um, using the 
the travel time attribute within the, the layer here. So one final note, um, we don't have unlimited calculations that we can do. So the free API key does limit you to 2,500 um, calls per day. So it's pretty extensive for, for most purposes, unless you're really carrying out a huge number of calculations, then the chances are that the, the free API key will be sufficient. Um, but they do offer paid plans. So if you do need to carry out more than 2,500 calls a day to the API, um, then you might want to look into some of Open Route Services' paid options instead. Okay, thanks.